Hello. This video speaks about dynamometers. Dynamometers are devices that are meant for measuring power or torque. In this session, we speak about dynamometers concepts, classification, the types of dynamometers, such as mechanical, hydraulic, and electrical dynamometers. As we have seen, dynamometer, these are devices used for measuring mechanical power or torque. Mechanical power means the power that can be developed by a device or a machine or the power that are required to operate a device, such as machine. We know that the power is a computed parameter and that is computed based on this equation where n is the rotation speed in revolutions per minute and T is the torque in Newton meter. Now let us see how dynamometers can be classified based on the way by which power is handled. There are three kinds of classification basically. These are absorption type dynamometers, driving type dynamometers and transmission type dynamometers. Absorption type, these are the devices which will absorb mechanical power while measuring torque. The energy absorption or that means it is done by means of braking and that can be done by mechanical, hydraulic, electrical means. There are examples like brake drum dynamometers, hydraulic dynamometers. These are examples for absorption type dynamometer. This method is used to measure power of power generating devices such as turbine, engines, motors. Basically, these are prime movers that are generating power. Now, driving type of dynamometer, why the name? Because it drives or supplies mechanical power to a device while measuring the torque. Examples of such dynamometers are DC motors or DC generators can be used as driving type dynamometers. This kind of dynamometers are used to measure power of power consuming devices such as pump, compressors, etc. Now, a third category, transmission type. It neither takes nor provides energy, but it just transmits the energy from one uh, device to another device. These are also called as torque meters. Examples are cradle the gearbox, which is connected between two devices, or a belt drive with the belt tension measurement. That is when tra power transmission happens, there will be one, one side there will be tension, another there will be slack. So by means of that, the power transmission, uh, the torque at that location can be identified. It is just passive device placed in between machines or within machine simply for the purpose of sensing torque at that location. From this description we can identify that the nature of the machine to be tested determines the kind of dynamometer to be used for torque or measurement. That means if it is a power generating device we will be going for power absorption kind of dynamometer. If it is a power consuming kind of general, uh, dynamometer you have to use, uh, sorry, a device, then you'll use power uh, driving kind of dynamometers. This is a kind of classification. Let us see the working and the concept of mechanical dynamometer. These are examples for power absorption type dynamometers. That means during measurement of power uh, and torque, it will absorb the energy. Generally, there will be a flywheel that will be attached on the output shaft of any device for which we have to identify the power. A braking force is applied on the flywheel to absorb the developed power. Now, when you apply the braking force, obviously the speed of rotation for the shaft will be reduced. Now, the resulting rotation speed due to the applied force is proportional to the power developed because we know that power is P is equal to 2 pi into N speed and torque. When you apply a force and if the force is applied at a particular distance, we know that it is the torque. If you know the applied force at a particular distance, then torque is known. Because of that torque, how much speed is now developed or reduced the what is the uh, the current speed that can also be sensed by means of a tachometer so if you know these two parameters you can compute what is the power of that particular device 
here we have two examples shown in this diagram one is a prony brake dynamometer which is one of the simplest method of dynamometer another one is a brake drum dynamometer in prony brake as the name indicates uh, it consists of a flywheel this is a flywheel that is mounted on a shaft this what you see here is a shaft and the shaft is coming from some prime mover such as turbine ic engine or something like that so when the ic engine uh, works or the turbine rotates the rotation is transferred to the shaft and the flywheel also will be rotated now in this arrangement there are two wooden blocks one is fixed to the frame and that is in contact with the flywheel and the wooden block is little away from the flywheel but this is attached with an arm and this arm has got a facility to provide force at a particular distance now when a particular force is applied here it can, uh, non force is applied here on a non distance this is a leverage distance l that means because of that movement this the arm will be moving like this so this block will come in contact with the flywheel so there will be a friction developed between this because of that friction the rotation speed of the flywheel will be coming down now in this case the rotation speed is the reduced speed and torque is equal to the force applied and the distance leverage distance l so by these parameters it, we can compute what is the power there is another kind of dynamometer breakdown dynamometer this is the dynamometer that is commonly seen in our fluid mechanics lab hydraulic machines lab uh, that is connected typically with the turbines where turbine is again a prime mover in this arrangement also there is an output shaft this is a shaft coming from the turbine and on the shaft a drum is mounted and the drum has uh, a non diameter okay it's a non diameter now there will be a rope moving around the drum at the end of the rope there is a facility to attach non weight so non weight can be attached here so when the turbine is rotated at a particular uh, with uh, 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 speed when the force is applied because of the friction between the rope and the uh, surface of the uh, drum the rotation speed of the drum reduces and that reduction in force is because of the, fo the weight added over here in this case the torque is the force the weight added here and the radial distance of the uh, this this radial distance that you see here it is uh, uh, the di uh, radius of the drum so we know the torque in this case and we know what is the resulting speed for this turbine or for this disc with that it's possible to compute what is the capability of that turbine in developing power so from this description we can understand that if it is a more powerful device if you apply a defined torque then there will be some kind of rotation speed if the uh, power of the device is much more higher for the same torque applied then the speed will also be higher or if it is a low power device then if a torque is applied there is chance that the speed can be totally come into a halt that means depending on the force you apply and the depending on the developed or the resulting speed that you get we can compute what is the power capability of that device Here is another kind of dynamometer called as hydraulic dynamometer. Here the principle is the hydraulic coupling between a fixed member that is called a stator and a moving element that is a disc or rotor. So the coupling between the stator and the rotor, rotor part opposes the rotation of the rotor and then the rotor supported on trunian bearing experiences the reaction force the reaction force is measured as torque by means of a load cell or torque meter here we have two designs shown in this uh, slide we can see let us see the construction and working of this kind of design here what you see here it is the output shaft from some prime mover such as ic engine or turbine okay now on this shaft a uh, rotor is mounted 
and there is a casing here and the casing is mounted on trunion that is a, it's a bearing so that the shaft and the rotor is free in movement oh, sorry the stator is free in movement it is a simply sub, uh, freely supported bearing okay casing is free to move in fact though it is a stator there is facility to provide fluid in a regulated fashion and the fluid can be going out also in this construction you can see that there is scoop kind of designs in the rotor and similar kind of scoops can be seen as integral part of the stator also now during working uh, uh, during working fluid will be supplied to this in this arrangement the casing is connected with a load cell that means if a reaction that is developed on the casing that will cause the movement of this arm and that the arm will exert a force on the load cell so the reaction force that is experienced on the stator during working can be taken by means of a load cell now in the working is when we switch on the device that is developing the power such as ic engine the rotor will be rotated because the rotor is mounted on the shaft whereas the stator will be stationary now the fluid is applied to this in a regulated fashion so the fluid will be filling filled inside this this kind of cavity so when the rotor moves the in the water or the liquid inside the casing will have a tendency to move to this casing in the stator so there will be a vortex flow generated in this inside the casing so because of that the uh, the fluid friction the uh, rotation of the rotor will be hindered like a kind of breaking is happening in this case and at, because of this hindrance a reaction will be developed on the stator so stator will also get a tendency to rotate but it is arrested here because of the arm so the reaction will be monitored through a load cell or a torque meter arrangement so when there is a reduction in speed we know what is the speed when we know what is a force that is developed here with that force and the rotation speed it is possible to compute or get the power of the input device there is another arrangement here again you can see that there is an output shaft that is coming from some prime overs and this is a casing uh, the casing is supported on a trunion like this that's a freely mounted ca uh, casing and there is a disc this disc is having some openings here like this kind of openings okay and there is also water or the liquid inlet port and water circulation outside outlet port now as we see in the previous case uh, the during power measurement the device will be in the device will be rotated so that the shaft will be rotated and the rotation will be transferred to the disc now the water is supplied so depending on the level and the quantity of the water and the pressure of liquid inside the casing that will offer a resistance for this uh, rotor to rotate so that at that time a reaction will be generated on the casing and the reaction will be transferred through the arm to the load cell so the resulting speed and the load or the torque that can be compute, uh, develop, uh, sensed by means of devices and from that it's possible to compute the power that means the resulting rotation speed and and the torque developed is used for power computation in the case of hydraulic dynamometer let us see one more kind of dynamometer that is electrical dynamometer there are many kinds of electrical dynamometer however we are discussing only about eddy current type of dynamometer again this is a power absorption type of dynamometer the principle is when a conducting material is moved through a rot or rotated in a magnetic flux field local current will flow within the material partially in short circuit paths we call it as eddy current due to this eddy current a magnetic field will be further generated which will couple with the original magnetic field thereby opposing the movement of the moving part that's a rotor this is called as electrical breaking on a rotor let us see the construction of an eddy current type of dynamometer this again there is an output shaft that is supported on trunion and uh, sorry uh, uh, okay and there is a stator the stator is supported on trunion there is a rotor disc that is having some teeth here okay that rotor will be typically made of mild steel or copper 
it's a disk solid disk in the in the stator there are windings which are meant for acting as electromagnets and for the casing there will be arm to sense the reaction of the uh, freely suspended or the supported uh, trunnion supported uh, casing there is an arm and the arm will be linked with a load cell so if there is a reaction in the casing the reaction will be transferred to the load cell now during the working the input device power generating device will be rotated and the output shaft of the device is connected with the dynamometer so when the shaft rotates the disc rotor disc will also be rotated now at this condition when there is electric supply given to this electromagnet a magnetic field will be developed and the magnetic field will be established between the stator and the rotor now we know that the rotor is rotated that is it's a it's a, it's a solid uh, metal member when it is rotated in a magnetic field there is variation magnetic field thereby an eddy current will be generated in the disc so uh, electro uh, the magnetic field corresponding to eddy current will also be generated thereby uh, elect, uh, resistance for rotation happens for the disc so because of this the change uh, the rotation speed now reduced speed can also be uh, checked and the re reaction that is developed in the stator can also be taken from a load cell so the resulting speed again and the torque developed is used for power computation by using this electrical dynamometer it is now time for a review of the content that we have seen could you please verify if you can classify dynamometer based on the kind of power handling can you suggest the kind of dynamometer that is used for measuring power of ic engine remember that ic engine is a power developing device uh, for compressor, we know that compressor is a power absorption device. Now you know what is the kind of dynamometer you have to use for this. Now describe the working of a rock drum or a brake drum dynamometer. Can you illustrate the working of dynamometer? If you have any question, please post it in the discussion forum. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye.